Hello everyone! Today we are opening our next batch of stuff from Japan. Um, there is a lot more boxes this time around than I'm used to. Um, there's actually going to be 11. Six of them have arrived. The other five aren't uh, coming until next week. But um, I've got these here, so I'm going to open them up right away. I think for the most part this batch is kind of not really interesting stuff. It's mostly just PCBs. Uh, which is why I think they pack them all separately. And I can tell just from like just how heavy and bulky these are, there's no way they would have fit these into like the three, two or three packages that they normally do for us. So that makes sense. And these are actually very nicely sized boxes. I'm probably going to keep them in case I ever have to ship out more than one PCB at a time. I have perfect boxes from Uline for shipping single PCBs but none really for shipping more than one at a time. So I'm just going to start opening these up. Uh, there's hopefully at least some of the interesting stuff is in here and it's not just all PCBs. Otherwise, this is going to be very boring opening for the first half. Um, we're going to have some boring opening stuff in here. It already looks like I can tell from this one. It looks like it's just two PCBs. We've got a Sega New and another Sega New. There's just two Sega News in here check and make sure there isn't anything else. I'm pretty sure there isn't. So yeah, these are just news. Nothing special about them, nothing with them. Um, and I'm stocking up on these because you can, with some hardware upgrades, upgrade them to new 1.1. And those have been going crazy expensive, particularly um, crossbeats because that can be run on, on like a regular touchscreen relatively easily. A lot of people have been after them for that to play on original hardware. So that's two Sega News there. Let's open up the next one. This one's also just as heavy and bulky. Okay, and let's see what we've got in here. Looks like, once again, two PCBs. And the top one, it's one of the more, I don't want to say more interesting, but it is an interesting one. It's a uh, Sega Lindbergh. I'm not going to unwrap it too much, but it's a silver one. I don't remember if this was Virtua Fighter 5 or if it was something else, but I'm going to set this aside a little bit later. I want to look at that and uh, see what it was. And then we've got another bulky PCB here. It looks like it's fully wrapped in cardboard. Let me go. I'm gonna open this up and see what's inside. If that open it up, it's just gonna be something common anyway. Um, I think of all the stuff I've been buying has been ES1s, ES3s. Um, I finally got a Type X3 with Ultra Street Fighter 4. I needed one of those original boards for a project. Um, and speak of the devil, that's this one. Oh. Get rid of this unpacking material real quick. So this is an Ultra Street Fighter 4 Type X3. And these were um, used to convert to Nessica Cross Live 2, which is why I want it is is I want it to do stuff with that. I'm going to put this back in the box. I'm going to put the Lindbergh back in the box. I'm going to make a note of this one and come back to it. These boxes, by the way, are perfect for two PCBs. Um, there's barely any room on the sides. They're the perfect height. I'm uh, curious where they get them because I couldn't find anything in the U.S that was this size perfectly. And this stuff is much cheaper shipped FedEx when you're shipping domestically. Um, and they care more about the size of the box than they do about the weight. So I've been, it's been really important to me at some point to find some boxes that are an exact size. Okay, so anyway, we're gonna open this one. This one's a little bit different shape than the others. So I'm hoping maybe this one 
has a few of the other things in it. So I wanted to mention one thing. Um, I've mentioned before that it's, it always seems to be a pain in the ass to get stuff to clear customs. Uh, always something else. So this time around, this batch of stuff, I think the, I want to say the value was something like 8,000 or so. Um, if I remember right, I bought a lot of stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised. At any rate, at a certain value, I think it was 2,500 they said, and over, you need to have an importer res registration. Um, which, since I'm doing these as personal use, um, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not just like putting it under the company or anything like that. So I ended up having to register a. Um, I just registered my social under and did that form. And then there was only this time. Um, well, I'll, I might explain it when I get to it. That's another second new. I'll keep digging through this. Um, when they have you call customs, the guy that answers, like the, the guy that normally answers, the, the generic like phone support guy, doesn't really know that much about your order is what I found out. Like they didn't even have the commercial invoice from the from from Japan, which is something that's required for them to have in order to clear. Um, and they were asking me to fill out all this stuff and a bunch of, and it was crazy. It was, anyway, I, I finally talked to one of the FedEx customs agents directly and yep, they, they actually sent me a copy of the commercial invoice that was supposed to be there. And it went from 33 items or 36 items or something needing information to just one. Um, so, I mean, I guess these are things that are only a problem for someone that's importing a lot of stuff. So I can't really complain too much about the system because I I ship a lot at a time. It's not something that most normal people are doing. I think like most people when they cons consolidate, they're consolidating three, four, five or six things or something like that, not 36 of them. So anyway, this one inside looks to be a Ring Edge 2. I've shown some, plenty of these, so I'm not going to trouble you with it, but close this back up and just put it back in. <clears throat> this one has a third PCB and the third one is here. Pull it out and snap this back in. Oh, well, it won't go back in. Hang on, let me get this back in real quick. What the heck is it stuck on? Oh. Okay. I'm trying to keep these all neatly padded and packed inside because for the most part it's all going to get put back in storage for a while. I've got way too much stuff to process as it is. So this one is just a Groove Coaster PCB. Um, these are getting very hard to get and very expensive. Type-X Zero isn't exactly fancy top-of-the-line hardware, but they still keep using it and uh, so as a result, spares have gotten very expensive. And um, a segue with that, the um, Groove Coaster cabinets, when something goes wrong with the PCB or if it doesn't have a PCB or the monitor goes bad, which is very common, the monitor going bad, those cabinets get junked and the junk price on them is actually extremely low. Like normally I don't really talk about the prices that I pay for stuff, but um, I have actually paid 50 bucks for a junk groove coaster cabinet. And before you start thinking that's incredible, that's you know, it's an amazing price, oh my god, how can I get that? Um, that Type X costs something like $400. And um, a new monitor, if, well, if you were to get an original monitor, it'd be $1,000 and they, you just don't do it. But if you were to get any other monitor, it's gonna cost you 300, 350 for another 55 inch monitor. Um, then you add in the cost of shipping it over here and all that stuff. It actually ends up not saving any money at all, really. Um, even though the junk cabinet you might get for $50. Um, now that was a one-time thing. I haven't gotten that again, and I haven't gotten that on other junk cabs before. So who knows, but just, just a little bit of trivia about Groove Coaster. Just in that the, it's just very expensive to repair. 
which is why a lot of them get junked instead of um, getting instead of like getting repaired or whatever. So anyway, and, and, I, and that's kind of an extreme case. Other cabinets are the same thing. A lot of the 2DXs that are going up parts on Yahoo Japan, or if you see like the nostalgia keyboard coming up, or um, or you know like a reflect beat touchscreen, or a bunch of parts or PCBs out of stuff. That's why is because the amount of time that's required to put into it, as well as the cost of the parts to repair, it actually it adds up to more than just having a, a working cab. So those that's why those cabs end up get broken down, uh, thrown out, and all the parts sold is because that's just the there's there's no money in it for for a distributor. Um, and part of what I've been doing, and I I think I've mentioned it before on other on um, cab opening videos of like junk cabs that I've gotten that um, I try to buy those cabinets even though it's not really a profit for me over any other is because I want to see those cabinets continue to be used continue to um, you know have a life otherwise they get torn down so a lot of times when people ask for parts I don't um, I don't really offer parts off of parts cabs because I'd rather make those cabs work again. So I'm just gonna pull this out here real quick. Sorry if I got, got a little caught up talking there, but that, that's an ES3 that I pulled out and this is an ES1. Um, I'll probably get to these sooner than later. I've actually been having trouble converting the ES1s, so um, for short term, I need to get a couple ES3s ready to go. Uh, Anyway, this one's an ES3 and an ES1. Close this back up. And we've got two more boxes left here. And it looks like those are just going to be PCBs. So all the extra stuff probably going to be in one of the boxes coming next week. So, okay. Put this together. Shove it off to the side. Get this one here. Also quite heavy, so also probably just PCBs. I don't know, the last one's a different shape. Maybe that one has some more interesting stuff and we can, you know, beat the monotony a little bit. Okay. So in this one we have, what's it gonna be? Looks like another ES1. And another Taito Type X3. Um, I'm not even going to bother taking that out. We've all we've all seen plenty of them. Um, even the non Street Fighter 4, the non um, Nessica Cross Live 2 ones. I've been stuck. I've been trying to get as many as I can. And a lot of people have asked me, you know, oh, do you still have any in stock? Will you sell any? Um, yes, I have some, but I am not selling them because. Um, I need them too. And with their value is just constantly going up, their their usability is constantly going up. Um, it's not a really good idea for me to sell them. And the thing is, is now that I, I'm not getting any more of these from my distributor, I'm having to buy these just the same as anybody else. It costs me just as much to buy for myself as it does to buy for someone else or for them to buy it themselves. So it doesn't do any, me or anyone else any good for me to buy it, import it, then have to pay another 50 bucks on top of that to ship it to people. Um, so as a result, I've been buying these, but I've been specifically buying them for myself, not for resale. Um, so long term, it might take a couple years before I really put to use everything. But um, it still, I, I need to keep them now and get them now while I can. And and the, the, the good thing is, is that I can, I can afford to. And um, and even if I have to sit on them for a while, at least I have them. Especially with some of the grander plans I have for the future, I want to have this stuff in stock. So this is a Tekken Tag Two. Um, and actually, yeah, this is all just going to be PCBs. I think the other stuff to that might not be in the box. I think there's some artwork that's supposed to go with it. Uh, but the bottom one is a Poppin' PCB. And unfortunately, this is starting to cost me more and more too. But And, and some people have been needing these to upgrade older cabinets or something. Um, but this is one of the Poppin' Dimani PCs. I have an IO and a harness for it. 
that uh, I've been sitting on for a while, so I'll actually be able to put this into a cab um, at some point. So, or or someone really needs it. But the problem is, is it's just it's getting kind of expensive. You can buy a cab, like a good, clean, working, non-yellow, one of the the newer SD cabs for around fifteen, sixteen hundred. You can get a cheap one for twelve hundred. Um, but the cost of getting a PCB to install in a cab is actually just getting high. The last one I sold for around 300 to someone who needed it. But in reality, these are it's starting to cost more like four or five, six hundred dollars to get one to install in a cab, which is just too much. It's, it's getting very expensive where, to the point where if you've got a cab, it's almost better to just get rid of it and buy another one. Um, while the cabs are still available and they're still you can still get SD popping cabs pretty easily um, at any rate that's kind of that and it and honestly it, it also comes back to that whole thing of it's cheaper to junk a cab part it out and buy a new one um, as a distributor and also as a user so it comes down to you know how much you really care about your your cab itself so buying that PCB for example um, it's not really for everyone. Anyway, that's all six of these boxes. They were all PCBs, um, two each, except for this box that had the um, the Type-X Zero in it. But that sums it up for this batch. Um, there's five back boxes coming. We'll do that next week. Um, let me just grab this real quick and. We've got, yeah, so it's just, just, uh, just that for this time, and, uh, I'll come back next week, I'll have the rest of these to open up, it has a couple more interesting things, I don't remember how much, there's a couple little things, but at least the next one should be considerably more interesting, so until next week, we will see you later, take care, looking forward to the next video.